There's plenty of the white stuff in this week's programme. Here in Hampshire at the Steventon shoot, it's six inches deep. We're out to film Roy on a pheasant shoot, something we've never done before. We're not altogether sure he understands that a shotgun is meant for shooting birds in the air and not incoming foxes. Hey ho, let's see if he gets booted off on the first drive for concentrating on ground game. Roy is a guest of Keith Gorsuch. They've swapped and shared some stalking outings over the past few years. Keith has kindly offered Roy the chance to join his friends and family day, but Roy's feeling a bit rusty. Whenever I get out on the, the stand, especially um, after being uh, out of the game for so long, the old butterflies are kicking really badly. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, I definitely think it's going to need a bit of luck on this one, but it's just absolutely amazing the feeling that you get when you you, you get out and uh, you're, you're on the stand, everything goes live, and uh, you're ready to begin. But, um, doesn't matter how much you've done it, it still gets exciting. On the next peg down is George with his caddy. This dedicated clay shot is having his first pop at game shooting, so has a friend to talk him through it. More about George later. On with the show and the higher numbered pegs and the walking gun get most of the shooting on this drive. Roy gets off the mark. He can now start to enjoy the day. No, that was brilliant. When you think that we are a week away from the end of the season, that was phenomenal, the amount of birds that are still showing. So uh, uh, I think the, uh, the keeper's going to be very happy with the show they've got here. I know they've got a few more days to finish off, but uh, you really can't complain about that. As Roy has got his eye in, we try and hinder him by strapping a GoPro camera to the end of his barrel. It ain't pretty, but we get the odd shot. Ooh. There are some good shots here today. Alan next door is a gamekeeper and shows us how it's done. Drive three is a short walk, but the beaters have a way to come. When they do, Roy picks some nice birds and some that need finishing off. With that bird there, it's not what you'd call a sporting bird, but she'd been hit by one of the guns standing in front. And uh, so it was just to administer the coup de grace. Roy also illustrates the most efficient way of using both barrels. He remains calm, refusing to show any emotion. And this is something you notice all across the country, that cool, calm exterior of a gun who's made a great shot. Inside, it's a different story. Sorry. They feel epic. <laughs> Time for 11s is and a chance to get to know our fellow guns. There is a mixed bag of experience here today. First day out on, uh, on game today? It is indeed. Uh, I've been shooting for some 20 odd years clay pigeons. Right. And I will say to you that uh, there's somewhat difference between clay pigeons and the, and, and, the live, and the live bird. Have you found it more tricky getting onto the birds from the, from the clay pigeons or is it...? It's a, I shoot down the line, which are all right. going array birds, yep. and of course you've got the incomers here and you've got the crosses. So yes, there is a variety. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what does put you off is when you get that little black eye looking at you. <laughs> right, that, they don't do that with clay, and when you miss it in clay shooting, they say lots. <laughs> Nobody calls out here, do they? But the actual atmosphere with the people, brilliant. That's it. Now I mean the com camaraderie is part of it. Absolutely isn't it? brilliant. Yes, uh, it, it's ten years old. Had an air rifle, shot at a sparrow, winged it. Quite, right. felt quite bad about that yeah. and then uh, I haven't shot since you know in the yeah, live yeah. until today right and I was interested to see my reactions once I'd shot the first clay first uh, bird, for, for, yeah. are you right first bird um, yeah fine no problem okay so your, your, your conscience is fine at the moment the adrenaline flows exactly and that's something that, that's something that surprised me yeah, yeah. because I mean you shoot at clays yes if you win and you get a silver cup, that makes the adrenaline go. But actually shooting the clay, yeah. I mean, there's no emotion in that because no. that's what it's all about. But this, because it's live. Yeah. Roy's next peg requires some fast reactions. The birds aren't low, but they scoot over the ride, offering only a small window of opportunity. There are clearly still plenty of birds about, even at this time of year, and it sounds like the guns have enjoyed a good season. So are you happy with the way that the shooting's gone this year? It's been been very good we thoroughly enjoyed it and I think most of the teams of guns have as well. Yeah. Excellent so they've all gone away with a smile on their faces. Yep yeah given it's uh, 
January, there's plenty of birds. Yep. And in actual fact, in terms of the flying ability, we've got two different uh, right, okay. uh, strains of bird here. All right. It's, it's, uh, the Kansas is the bird, but we've got a three-quarters uh, cross and a, and a pure Kansas. And believe it or not, uh, we've actually tagged them to uh, with different colour tags to see if we can determine which fly better and which hold better and some right. things that gamekeepers are very interested in. Yeah, um, because obviously that's your other side. You've got a, you're on a game farm as well. Right, yeah, yeah. But um, first year we've flown them and three other estates actually bought them from us this year as well. Um, the reports we got back from the keepers on all of the other three estates have said they have held brilliantly and flown brilliantly and in actual fact they already know they want the same again for next year. Excellent. With darkness always an issue at this time of year, we power through the next few drives looking to have a late lunch. Talking of food, Roy's convalescence from his op means he's put on a few pounds, which is why he is not wearing his breeks today. More importantly, it does affect the fit of the gun. All joking aside, I have found that um, when you put on a few pounds or lose a few pounds, the fit to the gun can change. You know, just because uh, you had a, a gun that fitted beforehand doesn't necessarily mean that it will continue to do so if you become a, a little fat porker like I have. Even with the extra padding, Roy and the rest of the guns shoot well and a good day is had by all with a bag of 228, most of which end up in the back of Roy's truck. Best leave off that gun fitting for a few months yet, Mr Lupton. For more information about the Steventon shoot, go to sportinggameservices.co.uk.